Ned Fulmer's work affair got him immediately ripped from the wildly popular YouTube channel foursome, The Try Guys. Former President Bill Clinton came on to Monica Lewinsky when she was an intern. Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani didn't just lie in the creation of Theranos, but also about their volatile romance. These are examples of situations where people definitely should not have dated their coworkers. But what about workplace romances that actually worked out pretty well, such as Michelle and Barack Obama, who met while working at the law firm Sidley and Austin, Bill and Melinda Gates, who met at Microsoft, and of course, Pam and Jim, who met at Dunder Mifflin. So should you actually date your coworkers? There's a lot of things to consider. And me coming from a human resources background, I've seen a lot of romances pop up in offices in my day. And in this video, you are going to get the behind the scenes scoop of how it actually may be the right move to date your coworkers. And other times it may be a grave error. If you're new here, Hello, I'm Madeline Mann. I'm a human resources leader who is now credited with helping hundreds of thousands of people land jobs and turn job seekers into job shoppers. You may have seen me on ABC, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and more. Subscribe to make sure you are always developing your career. At an event, I asked panelists to promote or demote the idea of dating a coworker. And here's what we said. Apologies for the poor lighting. Okay. Um, dating your coworker. <laughs> I've done it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say, and uh, it was it was a bad idea. I, I don't know. I just I just see so many happy couples and babies born from people who meet at their work. Like, where else do you meet people? You know, here. Like, as you can see, it's pretty split. Between Kia, who had a workplace romance and it didn't work out, and me, who is a romantic. Since it seems so split, I decided to ask human resources professionals what they think. If you're an employee who is thinking about dating somebody in the office, one thing that I would focus on is what your handbook says, so what your policy dictates. Does that mean that you would have to tell HR or your manager about a possible relationship or dating? Know what your steps are so that way you're ahead of it. You can make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do from a compliance standpoint. The other thing is, is I would really study the sexual harassment section of your company's handbook. There is a fine line of, you know, between sexual harassment and flirting and coming on to someone. So you would want to make sure that you're aware of what that would mean so that you don't put yourself in a situation where it could be misconstrued as sexual harassment. And when you're just trying to get to know somebody you're dating. So I would just make sure to know what your rights are, know what you need to do from a policy standpoint. And then from there, just make good decisions when interacting, especially especially in an office setting. Forbes advisor ran a survey that found that over 60% of adults have had a workplace romance. What I thought was tremendous is that 43% of respondents have married someone they worked with. That's a huge percent. Think about how many babies are on this planet because their parents met at work. And side note, I'm one of those babies. Is that why all I talk about is employment? Uh all right, this is getting disturbing. Now, the ushy gushy romantic in me should have stopped researching there because the stats only get worse. Cheating is absolutely rampant with coworkers dating. 40% of respondents reported cheating on their current partner with a coworker. According to Sherm, almost 40% of those who had an affair at work were the company's owners or executives. Whereas middle management made up 26%, intermediate level employees made up 25%, and low level employees made up 9%. This really knots my headphones because as I was doing this research, yes, there were a lot of high profile CEOs, executives, and business owners who had highly inappropriate affairs. And it saddens me that that isn't just for the headlines. The data backs it up that this is rampant. So while I am pro dating your coworkers, I am vehemently against cheating as well as taking advantage of a power dynamic. That's my presidential platform. Vote for me, Madeline Mann. Finally, a president who knows the Macarena. Now, if you are going to date a coworker, you have to have a level of emotional maturity that not everyone is in possession of, such as at Facebook and Google, they both have policies where you can only ask a coworker out once if they decline. So you just have to let that decline 
slip right off your back. Additionally, you have to play it cool, both in your infatuation with that person, where the Forbes advisor reported that 41% of coworkers have been uncomfortable witnessing public displays of affection at work and in your breakup, which could get really salty real quickly. And nearly 30% of couples in workplace relationships create a breakup backup plan where they <laughs> agree as to how they will handle their jobs if they break up. It's always good to be passively on the job market should anything hit the fan. So I will link a quiz below that based on your responses gives you a detailed job search plan to follow. So what is it like to date your coworker? Well, it's best to ask people that have real experience trying it. We worked really closely together in the first year of us working together. The office had a pretty strong non fraternization policy in place at the time. So it was definitely under the radar. It was difficult because at the time, Brandon was living in the same building as our CEO, CTO, and several other colleagues. And so it was kind of a very quiet, hope people don't see me in the elevator <laughs> the next morning if I had spent the night. So it was an interesting first six months of dating. Our COO told us that she thought we would make a really great couple. And I think it was kind of through that conversation that we were like, well, turns out we actually already are a cute couple. So uh, yeah, and she got super excited about that. The broken rule was celebrated more than we were punished for it, I'd say. There has to be so much mutual respect involved. You don't ever want to attempt to cross a boundary to see if something's there if you're not sure about it. I think both of us had to be 110% sure that there was interest on both sides before we would even have considered moving forward. Because on the off chance that there isn't, and it creates this environment, it may now be for Forever uncomfortable for yourself and for your colleague. Um, and that just kind of creates, you know, awkwardness and weirdness and makes it difficult to, to do your work properly if, if there's like that much discomfort there. So I would say really be sure, you know, I think it's, it's pretty obvious to know if someone is into you or not. And if you're trying to read between the lines to see if something is there, then it, it probably isn't. And it's probably not worth acting on. While there is so much good to come out of dating a coworker, I'm sure that there are things to look out for as well. I am no dating expert, but I found someone who is. Two people could start dating and it doesn't work out. And if you're dating outside of work, and let's say you're in a company of 500 people, the likelihood of seeing each other again and that kind of thing isn't going to be as big a deal as maybe like a very small work environment where there's only five people and everyone knows each other. So you really just have to, I think, play it smart, know who you want to like confide in around that and, you know, really pace things out. But I think the bottom line also is communication between the two parties. People aren't like really communicating about what those expectations are as they start getting into the dating thing. Then that also could be something that could go, I would say not wrong, but there's dangers there. <laughs> it's always fun to have playful and flirty banter between two people. And that could be even in the workforce because there's no harm in that. You know, you could flirt with even a friend or a coworker. But I think that if they're, let's say you are interested in somebody, the first thing is to get out of the work zone and the friend zone and into the flirt zone so that that person knows there's interest beyond just working together. And then from there, you know, it really is up to kind of the two parties at play on how they want to move on with each other. You're in an environment where there's like-minded people where you might have a lot in common, similar interests. So it's a natural fit that a work environment might be like a greenhouse, <laughs> you know, to breed relationships. And I think it's fantastic. Have you ever dated a coworker or seen people date in the workplace? Was it a terrible idea or did it work out just fine? Let us know in the comments. And since you're watching this video until the very end, make sure you're subscribed and hit a like on this video. You've got this Wi-Fi high five. <laughs>